the ideal gas law. There's actually many gas laws. We're going to focus on the ideal gas law and we're going to talk about some of the other ones and how they're derived from the ideal gas law. Um, but the one that you're going to use for most of your calculations is ideal gas law. This is the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. You'll hear it referred to a lot as PEVNERT. <laughs> um, basically, if you just you know pronounce all the letters, PEVNERT, PV equals NRT. Um, but it is, it's the law we use for gases that behave ideally. Now, ideal is not like a, it's, it's sort of like most gases don't behave ideally. Really, no gas behaves ideally, but a lot of gases get very close to behaving ideally. So it's our ideal gas law. And again, we use it for all gases. The only time we couldn't use it is at, um, high, extremely high pressures or extremely low temperatures, um, then the ideal gas law starts to break down. We won't experience these in regular chem. Um, you should just know that that's when the ideal gas law um, starts to break down. So P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles. Those are all the variables. R is the ideal gas law constant, and then T is temperature. Uh, so what is the value of R? Well, we know that at STP, at standard temperature and pressure, that one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters. Um, so if you rearrange the ideal gas law equation to solve for R, this is what we get. R equals PV over NT. So again, that was just rearranging this law. If I solve for R, I'm going to divide both sides by NT. That gives me PV over NT. So that's what you see here. So if um, I did R at STP, like I calculated at STP, I would put in my one ATM for the pressure, my 22.4 liters, because that's what one mole of gas is at STP. Again, that's one mole of gas. So for the, in the denominator, we do the one mole. And then 273 Kelvin, that's zero degrees Celsius, which is standard temperature, but converted to Kelvin is 273. So this is our ideal gas law constant. We are going to use this so much um, that you should memorize it. So 0 0.08206 ATMs times liters over moles times Kelvin. All of your units need to be converted to ATMs, liters, moles, and Kelvin. <clears throat> so if I gave you a different pressure, we learned all the pressure units. So let's say I gave you KPA instead of ATM, you would have to convert to ATM before doing your ideal gas law convert, your ideal gas law um, equation. If I gave you milliliters, you would have to convert to liters. If I gave you something other than moles, for example, grams, that will happen a lot where you're giving grams instead of moles and you first have to convert to moles. You are almost exclusively always given temperature and degrees Celsius and you have to convert to Kelvin by adding 273. So here's an example equation. How many grams of methanol can be produced from 3.50 liters, so I'm not going to have to convert that. I'm just going to be able to plug it in of hydrogen gas at 575 PSI. I know I can't convert in PSI, so I have to use my conversion, which is here. The 1 ATM equals 14.7 PSI and 55 degrees Celsius. Again, I know I'm not going to be able to use Celsius. I'm going to have to convert to Kelvin by adding 273. So here's my equation down below. It says how many grams? Well, grams isn't part of our PV equals NRT, but we know that we can convert moles to grams. So rearranging the equation, um, PV equals NRT, if I just go back here to solve for N, right, that means I'm going to divide both sides by RT. So PV over RT will equal N. So that's what you see here, N equals PV over RT. And then I plugged in everything. So PV gets plugged in with the, um, the conversion that we did for the, the pressure. So we had the 575, we converted it to 39.12 ATM, and that's what gets plugged in is the ATM. The 3.50 liters, we didn't have to do anything from that. That just came straight from the problem. Our constant, which again was on that last slide, but we memorized it. And then we converted our Celsius to Kelvin by adding 273. So a way to check that you make sure you've done this correctly is everything should cancel with those R units. So I have a liter in the numerator and in the denominator, so they cancel. ATM is in the numerator and in the denominator, so they cancel. And then here in this bottom part, I have... Um, Kelvin in like the numerator of my denominator and in the denominator of my denominator. So those two will cancel, leaving moles at the very bottom. But because this is a fraction, that actually swings moles up to the numerator. So um, that would give us our answer in moles. And then we would have to do a moles to gram conversion using molar mass to find the actual mass. 
From the ideal gas law, we can derive Avogadro's law, Boyle's, Charles, Gay-Lussac, and combined gas law. So these are the individual laws. So for Boyle's law, we would start with the ideal gas law, and then Boyle's law keeps temperature and moles constant. So here's the PV equals NRT. If moles, which is N, and temperature, which is T, is constant, R is already a constant, so that means PV is the only thing changing, then um, our formula is PV. P1V1 equals P2V2, um, showing that those are two different gases. So Charles' law kind of operates the same way. Um, v and T are the only ones changing because pressure and moles are constant. So rearranging the equation, that's V over T equals V2 over T2, again, with two different gases. Uh, Gay-Lussac's is pressure and temperature are the only things that are changing. So P1 over T1. Again, putting them on the same side of the equation. Avogadro is just volume and moles. And then combined is uh, pressure, volume, and temperature. Again, these are all derived from the ideal gas law equation. If you just, um, like the ones that, the variables that are constant, if you like take those out of the equation and then rearrange to put everything on the same side of the equal sign, you can um, get to all of these five uh, uh, people. I guess combined is not really a people, but all of those laws, all those five laws. So this is just a little picture that I found that I thought was helpful. So PV equals NRT. So if I was going to do Boyle's law, which is up here in the corner, this P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So N, R, and T are all constant, which means PV equals a constant, a, a, some constant K, let's just say. So if I have one gas that equals constant K and I have a second gas that equals constant K, I can therefore say that that first gas equals that second gas since they equal the same thing. Um, and that's where I get the law P1, V1. So that's the first gas equals P2, V2. That's, that's, it's not really actually a second gas. It's just the gas at a second, um, second like second values so it's like it's like if i had oxygen gas and the first pressure was one atm and one liter <laughs> and then my s equals my second pressure it would still be that oxygen gas but we would now be at like maybe two atms f and then looking for a new volume um so that's what these mean one and two it's 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 more like it's not it's not actually a different gas it's the same gas but at a different in different circumstances there we go um, I actually found this picture really helpful too because it includes like which ones are constant. I really liked that, but it only shows Boyle's, Charles, and, Gay and combined. It doesn't show you Gay-Lussac and, and, uh, and Avogadro, but um, you do need to know all five. Mm. You uh, um, more likely won't be ex like asked to do calculations for all five. I just really would like you guys to know um, the name of the law, what the law is, which variable, variables are being held constant um, in order to make that law possible.